Ooh, I am running late. <laughs> Usually I, I do like a little intermission thing for a bit, but, uh, fuck. So, uh, welcome. I'm going to call them in just a second. Uh, more Ape Escape 3. Tomorrow we're going to be doing a stream of one of, like, two games, possibly. Let me, uh, give the group a call. Uh, but that'll be just me. There won't be a group call in there. Hello. Hello. I guess the clock. Oh, I guess clocks changed. Whoops. Yeah. Well, yours did. Mine haven't. Yours is next Fuck week, or, or a couple of days, actually, yeah. rather. Because I was like, ah, I've still got time. I got time. As you're like, your pants are down. You're like, ah, ah! start running Jerks over. On. Jerks on you. I don't wear pants. Trousers, sorry. Checks on you. I don't wear trousers. Yeah. That's why my pants. That's why I will never be accused of being a liar, for my pants can never be on fire. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, the links up just above you, so uh, you know the drill. Yeah, I gotta scroll past Banana Man. Everyone's favorite superhero. Though he's got nothing on the wither. Just, just saying. Just saying. Yeah. But, you know, few people have anything on the wizard, in all fairness. Can't all be the wizard. We, you really can't. And you can try. So how's your week been? Uh, I mean, pretty shitty, but... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, at work, so I got my arm cut real bad at work, because um, we have these, like, retractable knife for box cutting. Like, you know, uh, when you, uh... Oh, no, it's you... It's dumber than that. Uh, someone, because they were kept in like this office cupboard that's got like all of the um, stuff that not only does we do we use in the office, but everyone else in like the building also will pop into. And someone didn't retract the knife, so I walked into the office. I walked oh. in to get like, something, and like um, yeah, you know, it was overhanging, so it just sliced my left my arm up. And it like right near the elbow, so anytime I bend my arm, I can like feel the skin pulling. Oh my god, that's awful. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And of Jeez. course, because like dozens of people use that room, like oh, I use that as a closet like every day. Literally, no way of knowing who could have done which person could have done it. So you'd be here all day trying to figure it out. Well, it's just the fact that it's not just people who are in the office, but like people who are also in the building will go by and use it. So you literally have no idea. Who could have been in? Because even if there was a camera in there, okay. anyway, so that's been kind of annoying. Yeah, I, I am sorry. They finished rebirth though. Nice. Um, I've been kind of just chilling. I uh started. It I started it a few days before. Um. The news came out, but I started a uh, a watch of Dragon Ball Kai. Yeah. Um, Literally the day after we did our last thing, yeah. Yeah, because I started it like I started it like I think that day actually. And uh, yeah, I I was I was taken by surprise, honestly. Actually, no, it was the day because I was in um. Right. For me, it was that day because it was that night. Oh, uh, because I was yeah. in a, one, one of my friend's streams, and, and uh, the news broke while uh, she was playing uh, Pokemon. I yeah, did... was surprised, honestly. Well, I mean, he died of a subdural hematoma, right? So he probably uh, it was like presumably some head some trauma he experienced that did it. So yeah, there, not like it, it wasn't a dis disease or anything. Yeah, there's a chance he might not have even known he had it. Yeah. Still, it's not quite like as tragic as what happened to the Yu-Gi-Oh guy last year, but yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's still, yeah. Still bites. Yeah, I was saying to someone is that it's not even just a matter of oh, Dragon Ball is a series I like, but Dragon Ball is one of those series that um, is important. I always liked and. Or, or, I think it's important because it's one of those like series that everyone in my friend group, in my other like major friend group, everyone knows Dragon Ball. It's like the only thing everyone knows. 
Because I've got friends who are into wrestling, I've got friends who are into RPGs. It's like, it's like, but it's the one thing where if you reference it, everyone's like, oh yeah. Yeah, Dragon Ball is like universally popular and well known. It's like one of the most well known franchises, period. Not even just anime. Yeah. I mean, hell, Goku has uh, been in the um, Thanksgiving Day parades. He's, he's been in the. He's been in there for a couple of years now. Yeah. It's um. Yeah, cause like uh, but yeah, it's it's a big deal. Its influence is fucking everywhere. Uh, like hell, even like what was it? Uh, the Powerpuff Girls fucking like took a shot for shot of like when Trunks dodges the fucking beam by just moving his head slightly. Literally, the only mm -hmm. difference is the beam's on the opposite side of where it's shot, and she moves her head on the opposite side. It's literally the only difference. It was, uh, I don't remember the, the exact episode, but I, I think it might have been, uh, Princess's first episode. It's when, uh, she has, like, the battle armor and is fighting them, and she beats the fuck out of, uh, Bubbles and Buttercup. Ah. Uh, take your word for it. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of just a really... Uh, thing to wake up to, but yeah, and as I said, it's upsetting more from the fact that Dragon Ball's been really important just as like a cultural thing and as like, uh, uh, as I said, it's this, it's that kind of great series where even people, I, even friends who don't like anime, like Dragon uh, Ball, no Dragon Ball, and like, even I mean, if you look at it, like video games, hell, like he's he's done a lot of character work for a lot of video games, Dragon Quest oh, DNA yeah. is like 90% him. I mean, Chrono Trigger was so good he had to put it into Dragon Ball. It's true. I have had ramblings of uh, Chrono Trigger remake or remaster or something, so we'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if just basically like every sort of a Toriyama thing suddenly gets like talk of having a major comeback. Oh yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. Watch Microsoft. I mean, there was a. a I, mean, the, I mean, I know he was working on a lot of projects before he passed too. I mean, wasn't Sandland just literally about to come out? Yeah, there, there's a Sandland video game coming out. It looks pretty good too. Like I said, I'm waiting for when Microsoft announces here's Blue Dragon too. That's entirely fair. But, uh, though I don't know why they would want Blue Dragon 2, that, that game sucked. I mean, just for the virtue of, well, it's Microsoft, and what the fuck else they got, they're gonna do, use, like, any of those, any of those companies they spent billions purchasing. No. Not on my, not on my watch. And they just hoard them like a dragon. God, I hate Microsoft. I still can't get over how people were talking, like, oh no, Microsoft will save, save them when they buy them. I was like, what? What world are you from? What timeline are you from where you believe that's going to happen? Well, it's okay, because Bobby Kotick is uh, allegedly talking, thinking about trying to buy TikTok. I saw that! Which, you know, just ruin life for another generation of youngsters. Kind of the damn no matter what you do, it's either basic, it's either like under legal obligation to give all of its data to the Chinese government, or it's owned by Bobby Kotick. It's it is actually whoever wins we lose, isn't it always? Isn't it always though? Not always, but. Right. Yeah, I spent a lot. But yeah, I spent a lot of my time when I wasn't, you know, being sliced up at work, uh, playing Rebirths, and I mean, I'm technically playing it now because I'm doing some more side content. But like, yeah, I'm pretty. Uh, I've definitely played a lot of the game. Fair. It has a massive amount of content. I'll give it that. Yeah, I heard, like, I heard that. Not, yeah. It is not a small game. Part of that content is a lot of a lot of mini games. Which, to be fair, there wasn't there a lot in the original seven. It's been a long time. But... Yeah, uh, there are, but you know the difference. But a lot of them don't feel quite as uh, didn't feel quite as obnoxious from what I remember. Uh, there are some mini games like this one where you have to like 
basically just play not quite whack-a-mole but whack a cactar which is just really annoying and of course uh, to do it like eight times <laughs> oh no the game is overall good but i could definitely see where um some people have prob have issues it doesn't I mean, i'm not gonna talk i don't know how much to really talk about because you know spoilers right because i feel like uh definitely there's stuff that uh people probably don't want to hear about or you might not want to hear about in regards to certain events that may or may not happen i mean i don't care but we are on stream so you know spoilers and such for anybody who comes across this or watch the vod yeah well anyway i'll just make it so you can feel free to ask whatever you want to ask and i'll answer i'll just ask after stream yeah sure uh, but, uh, but yeah, like I said, I've been primarily watching, uh, rewatching Dragon Ball, playing Tekken, um, Saiyan Saga's so good. The Kai version is a lot better, because it's a lot snappier. Like, they get to Namek on fucking episode 30. <laughs> like, the flow is a lot better. And the voice What's acting, that? honestly, I think it's better, because, I mean, it makes sense. It's decades later, when, back when it first released, like... A lot of these voice actors were, like, off the street at the time. Like, I know Videl's voice actress in Slash Goten's was, uh... Literally, she just answered an ad in a newspaper. So, you yeah, know... You gotta, anyway, you gotta get a gig somehow. It just... You know, I, I mean, more and more bring it up for, like, how much of a different environment it was back then versus now. Where you could apply on a newspaper for a voice acting job for an anime. I mean, in Texas specifically, but you know. Mm. But uh, since I I'm almost done Namek, I got to Goku uh, getting ready to fight Frieza, Vegeta dying, you know all that fun shit. Good old cheats. But uh, still pretty early on. Um, but uh, I'll probably finish the, uh, the Namek Saga tonight. I will say, so, I, I, Namek's good. I still think I th like Saiyan Saga more. Though I do like the whole aspect of the three-faction war for the balls and all that shit. Uh, I don't know. find them. It's gotta find those Dragon Balls. It's a good arc. I just think I like the Saiyan Saga a little bit more so far. But who knows, maybe we'll see, and I, maybe I'll change my mind once we get to the finale. But, for the most part, I've usually said Saiyan Saga is my favorite. It is good, though, to see early Dragon Ball Z, where the other characters actually get the, get, the, get their licks in on fights. Hey, hang on a second. Unless they yomp true TN. That's not fair, TN gets some. This war goes by the name of Miracle Ninja. I kind of feel like Tien is the Boba Fett of, um, Dragon Ball. <laughs> Incredi incredibly beloved and popular, doesn't do fucking anything in the actual thing he's from. Well, also, Kai, also gonna say, kind of a bitch. Well, he's popular and beloved in America. The Japanese don't like him. Except for the uh, the producer for Dra Fighter Z, she loves Tien. Hey, I I'm just saying she likes Tien. What do you want from me? I I can't make her have taste. Like the, like it's uh, someone to go goodbye Tien. Bye Tien. Chachu! You know that's the mo that's the most he's ever attributed to the series. Chiaotzu or Tien? Uh, Chiaotzu. Oh yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> I'm like, man, we give Yamcha shit, but at least Yamcha has actually had some wins on screen. Chiaotzu sucks. I mean, Yamcha mostly gets shit for, um, the whole Cyberman thing. Which was him just dropping his guard like an idiot. Like, he beat the fuck out of it, and then he dropped his guard. 
Like, they were all actually way stronger than the Cybermen. Well, maybe not Chao Tzu, but I also might be saying that just because I think it's funny to make fun of Chao Tzu. Also, I've unlocked the ninja uh, transformation. The knucklehead ninja. Uh, sure. Believe it. He said the thing. He said the thing. He said the line, Bar. He said the line. But, uh, but yeah, Saiyan, Saiyan Saga and Namek Saga is still good. Uh, I'm still plugging away at Tekken because I like it. It's Tekken, what do you want? I, I can't really add anything. I've already beaten the story mode. I did that ages ago. I wonder what, char I wonder what characters you play and why are they Asuka and Reina? Kuma. I didn't disagree with what I said, though. Kuma is my highest ranked character. I didn't say he wasn't your best character. I was just saying, do you play Asuka and Raina, though? Uh, my lawyer has told me that I don't need to answer this question. Ah, the old Trump defense. So it's wait, no, the Trump defense is to tell is to say actually, my oh, lawyers oh. told me to do some. My lawyers told me to do the illegal thing. So actually, it's their fault. Or to say I don't recall. Actually, there's a question I wanted to ask you. Since his whole argument is, well, I, when I was when I was president, I had diplomatic, I had immunity from everything. Does that mean Biden could just walk up and shoot him, and then by his own logic, Biden is immune and did nothing wrong? Well, neither of them are allowed. To do, well, neither of them are allowed to do that. They're both not. Like neither of them are allowed to. By his logic, uh, it should be, but he would say no. It's different because I'm special. But I'm just saying by his logic. By his happen? logic, yes, but then he would tell you, no, I'm different. Also, hi, Sabo. Yeah, hi, Sabo. It's an interesting one to come into. Yeah, earlier we were talking about Dragon Ball Toriyama, then you walked into this one. Ah, yes, Toriyama. Well, it's because I can't. It's because to me, well, as I said, the thing I've been doing most of the week is kind of the thing I can't super talk about at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yes, rebirth. Yeah. And I did, and I've been doing like a Dragon Ball. Uh, Kai uh, watch because I never actually watched the uh, Kai version before. Only ever watched the uh, when I grew up with. Because I mean, the big question most people are what to, well, what to know is what happens at the end, and it's like I mean, I could yeah, say. I don't, but then I don't want to... to know what happens at the end. Uh, you actually, Yuffie pilots want... a giant robot and uh, fights. Uh, Genesis. Uh, I don't know. I'm just making up bullshit. No, he, actually, he's confirmed Genesis is not in it, which is good. Yeah, I did say. I did tell him. He's, 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 he's like, you could be rush assured of one thing. There is no Genesis. No, no, I know he's not in there. That's why I was I was trying to make up as much bullshit that I knew wouldn't be in the game. So I was like, I can say this part. Oh, shit. This isn't really out of the realm. Let me just throw Genesis in here because we know Genesis isn't in the game. Well, I mean... To be fair, we didn't because um, need I remind you that uh, the Deep Ground Boys were in Integrade. That's Nero, true. Nero and Weiss. And Ruby? No. I know I'm being funny. No, the other Weiss. <laughs> the other Weiss. The... Why are you Weiss? Why is he Weiss? Dude, you can't just ask somebody why they're Weiss. Oh, you can. You can. That's like that's like the one thing you can ask. Uh, Gil. I mean, I can't tell you who the secret like who the uh, secret cameo character is. Like, Cause, cause it, it's Gilgamesh. Oh yeah, but we all knew that. Yeah, but he's a boss and a summon, and he's fun, and he's you know, when you fight him, he does indeed accidentally summon Excalibur. There's this great moment. Pork. No, no. There's this great moment in the fight where he summons Excalibur. He attacks. With, he, he thinks it's Excalibur. He attacks with it. It deals one damage, and he's like, "Oh no, this is but Excalibur." And then it just like, pull the camera pulls back. And you see the entire party just standing in silence, staring at Gilgamesh because he's, you know, a weirdo. Oh, and also he says the line. No, 
Oh, it's morphin' time. He says it's morphin' time. Ah, good. He said the line part. I didn't think. Honestly, I never. Th I thought that line would never come back. I thought he would forever just be Gilgamesh, that weirdo who keeps coming, keeps popping up. But no, he morphed. He henshined, actually. No, he morphed. I'm pretty sure that's the line. In Japanese, he says henshin, and they're like, "Well, nobody knows what that is at the time. We better do it's morphing time." Just the only thing people know are Power Rangers. But it's okay. Well, no, but yeah, but maybe. But also, if Darlin is gonna knock people down, then Gilgamesh is gonna morph. Well, speaking, of, order... speaking of that, um, Austin St. John is now selling uh, a line of shirts oh, with Hitler. God. Yeah, get with Hitler lines on them. Because uh, to quote him, he had some pretty good one-liners. I thought he was going to jail for super fraud. The jury's still out on that. He's not wrong. I mean, I don't know that. I mean, you know, the, I was gonna, I was gonna say Saban, but Saban is not, is, has no involvement in that franchise anymore. Like, they might be, yeah, it's not, the, it's not they might be, right now. they might be protecting him out of desperation because, like, who, who else, who else we can have to save the franchise? It's owned by Hasbro now. I don't think they really give a shit. No, I think they're. I'm pretty sure they're just like it's over. It's over. We're just gonna wait until it's time to re re up our contract and then just let Toy have it. Unless they're dumb enough to keep paying for a license for something that they're not going to use, which is possible. I mean, Hasbro is pretty stupid. Exceedingly stupid. Like, uh, like never underestimate the power of idiots with a lot of money. They don't have a lot of money anymore. Never yeah. underestimate idiots who think they have a lot of money. <laughs> they're quite broke. Well, they do have money, it's just all of it's going to the executives. Because in the year where they posted that their uh, loss, their executives also got like a $9 million bonus. Oh so. yeah, they're, yep. they're, they're, giving all, they're giving all the money to the executives, which just made people think that, um, you know. So, it, so it's not a case of, oh, we have nothing. It's a case of, we've given everything away, and now we have nothing. Well, yeah, think... the CEOs basically fucking gut companies and take, run away with all the money. Well, I'm gonna say, the fact that they gave them all the money makes them think that they're just like, they know it's over, and they're just collecting their golden parachutes before they bail out. Oh, why? Because the year before, because this year they posted a downturn, but the year before they posted, like, record-breaking profits, and it's not as if, like, they don't have, pro they don't have uh, profitable properties, like, Dungeons and & Dragons and Transformers do still make bank. It's just yeah, they yeah, obviously yeah. have stuff in. They've obviously put in uh -oh, stuff in monkey. other stuff. Oh, and in this one, he's uh, even more rapey. True. You know, he probably he would have been less if I was the girl. I know that. No. Yeah, he do. But he'd have just been more catty. Yeah. Oh my! What a cute little child you are. <laughs> If I recall, I think this this one's voiced by Lex Lang. Have you looked in the mirror lately? Why are we quiet for this? <laughs> oh no, sorry, it's because I was looking at other stuff. <laughs> like I said, part of my problem is every time I'm thinking, oh, I'll talk about this. Right, can't talk about that. Shit, because spoilers or related to stuff. But. Uh, Sabo might not want to know. Annoyance. That's fair. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 but yeah, I've been playing more like Relink too. That's the other thing I've been playing, and it's it's a fun action RPG. I, I don't really have much to talk about on it. The story is pretty simple, but eh, it's fine. Gameplay is really fun. Boss fights are fun. Music's good. Well, which will it be? I guess I'll have to. Well, time to fight Yellow Monkey again. You'll never win. Guess I'll have to fight you. But, uh... Man, he's significantly smaller in this game compared to the uh, other one. I'm not talking about when he had the giant form either, just, uh... You know, in general. Probably to deal with the fact that it's much, uh... 
much uh, larger arena, and he's meant to be much quicker because he's meant to, cap meant to capitalize off of ninja power. Probably. Because he was enormous as a sumo in the first game, or well, second game. Behold, ninja power. Oh, well, I need to beat up goons so I can get ninja form, because you can only fight this one in ninja form. Yeah, um, yeah, I do I wonder know. when they go for whatever they call the third game, how much they're gonna butcher Knights of the Round. Oh, as far as uh, you know, like not, nope, just they summoning, see. not just summoning thirteen guys that do a ridiculous amount of damage. Yeah, basically. Uh, the fact that there's a way you can junk, you can uh, set it up that what Knights of the Round could basically one shot safer Sephiroth. off. Well, Yellow Monkey is significantly easier in this game. Congrats. They were much harder in 2, but then again, all the fights were much harder in 2. I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to think what summons are still left, because in Rebirth you get Titan, Kajata, uh... I mean, you have all the ones from the first game, but they also have um, Kajata, Titan, Phoenix, Bahamut Arisen, or second form Bahamut. So, not, so it's not Neo anymore? No, he's now called Arisen, and he's red. Uh, yeah, Neo was red. Now uh, he's got jets on his back. Let me go check what summons are left. Because Gilgamesh is up Oh here. god, oh. I forgot Pink Monkey in this game is voiced by Jimmy Neutron. Yeah, makes sense. I guess uh, the only ones left in the base game are Hades, Typhon, Bahamut Zero, and Knights of the Round. Yeah. So I assume we'll get another bonus ones. I was gonna say, yeah, that's basically the only ones you get in this two. I'm trying to think who. Um... I wonder what other summons they'll add in. They can't really they can't really go for like other game stuff, can they? Can't they? Welcome well, I mean like some stuff is redundant. I'm gonna load up some and new you can't add the other you to have fun you know, but see thunder me, ones. That monkey yellow. I mean you already have Ramu, I mean I guess that you can. But... One, really. I mean they ha already have Ifra and they gave us Phoenix. Yeah, but that was in the original too. Still. And Kujar and because Phoenix is fire and also and Kujata has three elements, because he's a special ball. Oh, I will say there's no heavy tank, which made me sad that he wasn't in. Yeah, you said that last time. Oh, but this time I know for definite there's no heavy tank. Yeah, I guess... Before I guess, it was the... I guess those one-off weird enemies aren't going to be in it all the time. And doesn't... not all the time. I don't think I noticed any, like, particularly weird one-off enemies who are just randomly upgraded to bosses like Hell House was. But then, you know, they left in a bunch of stuff that I did like. Yeah, that, that bunch of other, like, weird stuff. Oh! Weirdly! They left it- they put in a reference to Final Fantasy XIII 2 of all things. Oh no. So do you remember the song that would play when you ride on a chocobo? Yeah. That really sort of heavy metal grunge chocobo song? Yeah, that's been remixed. Next really? into something called it used to be Crazy Chocobo, now it's Crazy Air Chocobo. Good. So, I thought, yeah. thought you were gonna say it's like Gilgamesh has all has all his guns in thirteen too. No, he just has his his swords. Ah, oh, finally yeah. the sky well, flyer. Well, in thirteen too, he he, he, <laughs> he first shows up with a bunch of guns and he's like, nah, this isn't very fun. And then he goes for the swords. That does sound like Gilgamesh. I always look forward to getting the Skyflyer because it's like one of those, the most useful to gadgets to just use. Like it's always good. Just to kind of have on your uh, quick bar. 
Well, just having that extra axis of movement is always good. One thing I like um, in this game is the fact that you can tap the uh, the buttons to just switch the uh, gadgets out quicker. I'll be back. Mm. So you don't have to open the select menu if you don't want to. So it makes the game flow a lot faster. <coughs> yeah. Like I can just... Nah, the sky flyer. It's definitely a nice quality of life, which is why it's also a shame that we never got another fucking ape escape after this. Yeah, we got three games. It's better than some games get. That's true. And all, and all three are good games. So it's not like it had like a. It's not like the main entries had a bad game in the series. But yeah, I do agree. It's sad that we never got more. Like, the game sold well, so I, I just don't get it. You think we'd get more? At least I think they sold well this time. I could be wrong. Yeah, they sold decently. But, you know, like we said last week, all Sony cares about now is sad dads. That's the other thing. Sony just kind of um, made more of a move towards Western developers, and Western developers were, were a lot less interested, were a lot more interested in their sort of. Midlife, no. midlife crises. Things like, in, like, in, well, not even necessarily things that were bad games, because it went maybe pushed for like, obviously things like Infamous, um, Uncharted, but obviously those weird. Stop even making Infamous. I mean, they made like three games for it, three and a half. Uh, but I'm just saying is that that's when they started to push away, and you know, uh, the weird quirky Japanese titles like Gravity Rush got. Um, Got the axe. Completely, yeah. Uh, it's a real shame. I always really like Gravity Rush. Not enough sad dads. Maybe if they made a sad dad in the game. Honestly, a maze Gravity Rush 2 hasn't had like, like a resurgence, or Gravity Rush hasn't had like a minor resurgence. Well, it doesn't have a sad dad in it. Oh, I mean, not from them, but I meant from like other people going back and seeing it. Because it is like. It's a weird, quirky game that I can't. That even though it's like a superhero sandbox, there's really none of nothing like it. You know, it's fun. I never got to play it. To be honest, you should play it. It's fun. You should play it. You'll like them both. I think the first and the second one. Just you know, keep in mind the first one is a um, port of a PSV like, game. You know, a remaster of a PS Vita game. A PS Vita. Sorry, my bad. So. Here it's not like there's nothing really like majorly noticeable but just yeah you can see where obviously it was for Vita oh was yeah this, uh, this reminded me since we're talking about like uh, it, it, it's not asking how my brain went to the train but uh I just remembered uh the uh the uh the producer for Persona 3 Remake is trying to be like oh uh yeah we only made the uh, answer after there was such uh, fan demand for it, and I'm like, really yeah, no, you were already developing it when when you said yeah. to people that you fucking didn't make that you wouldn't weren't making it because you wanted to maintain the original the original experience. You were literally while telling us that in the same breath developing that fucking DLC. At this point, I, at this point, I just assume whenever they're like, oh, you know, we don't have any current plans for any expanded content at this time, I'm just like assuming they're lying. Oh, yeah, like what they're saying, like, oh, because, we, we have, we're not doing because the every female single, MC. Every single, it's like, no, you single, are. Every single Shin Megami Tensei and Persona game has had either a re-release or expanded content. Oh, there's going to be a re-release of 3. It's going to be the one with f female MC, and it's going to be called, like, Second in the Chamber or some bullshit. Probably. The worst part is the fucking pricing on the answer DLC. Especially when the, when the uh, remake is seventy dollars. Yeah. Do so you need to pay like a like a hundred plus dollars if you want to play the Persona Three game that you should have got on launch? It's still not even the, the one you should have got on launch because the female MC stuff's not in the game. I mean, I can at least understand that to an extent. Is that coming later? But I think the fact not for seventy dollars. <laughs> But I think the fact that they literally cut off the answer and then have tried to pretend that, oh, well, we only added this in recently. It's like, 
No, you fucking didn't. That's, Especially since game development doesn't take that isn't that quick. I know you also, were working on that. Let's be honest. With Why Atlas's, you were telling us no? And also, let's be honest. With Atlas's fucking turnaround on doing anything, and the fact that they've lied before. Yeah, it's like. Just, it's just fucking bullshit. I don't know why they think we're gonna believe it, and it just makes me glad that I didn't pick up three, uh, the remake of three. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, now I have actual incentive to just wait till it goes down. Yeah, just wait for it to like go on sale, price. and w wait for wait for the fucking next version to come out. Wait for that version to go on sale. Buy that version. I mean, Hell, even like... even the Shin Megami Tensei game that was originally a Switch exclusive is getting a re-release with added content. So, yeah, of like, it is. Wh why buy Atlas games when they first come out? Unless you really, unless you really just can't wait and don't want to be spoiled. Yeah, but <laughs> but, I, but but in three's case, we already know what's going to happen. So you know. Yeah. What's the what? Ha I wonder if this main character lives to the end of the game. I wonder if I become a door, Jesus Christ. The one thing that, that does suck about it getting remade is the Persona 3 fans became insufferable again. Oh god, that's my net. That's my net. That's my net. Okay, he didn't get my net. He got my Sun Club. That's much more manageable. But, uh... They did get unsufferable again for a oh, little yes. bit. Oh god, those, those guys are back. Our game is the best. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're back. And usually they get quiet when I make the joke about how the main character die, dies because he's Jesus Christ, but also a door. They, they don't seem to think that's funny. Well, that's why their game hasn't had any, uh, you know, hasn't had nearly as much spin-off stuff as 4 and 5. Like, I mean, it's kind of hard to, kind of hard to really do anything when uh, the main character is dead and everyone else moves on. It's not like with 4 and 5 where they're like, oh, maybe we'll have further adventures in the future. Or you can just have, like, you come back to the bo to the boonies and fuck around, or Joker come back to the city and fuck around. Yeah. But uh. But yeah. That's also why. I, I mean, that's I... also why. I, that's also why I don't really want to play it again because I was like, I don't know, why would I want to self-insert into a guy who's going to die? Like I already know what happens to me. Yeah, it's like I'm not. It's like, but I, I will never die, and that won't include dying in magma either. Dies and Sabo dies in magma. Oh, I will. I will. Cra I crave the certainty of steel. Melted down in the steel f the refinery. Yeah. Oh, that's that's the point. Managed to keep Kate Sith weird, but you know, slightly more fun than he is in the original FF7 in terms yeah, her, of gameplay. Yeah, he's actually useful in this one. Yeah, well, I don't know about useful. He, he he's not completely worthless. I mean, I didn't think I didn't think he was useless in the first game. I mean, his limits aren't very good, but you know, he's, he's fire. But it's just the problem is in the original game, Kate Sith is completely outclassed by basically every party member. Not even factoring in dumb bullshit like Yuffie is kind of broken, but also not because she's got mess stats, but shuriken, but her ability to attack from the back row is fucking amazing. And also, but, she is the glitched weapon that does maximum damage on everything. Yeah. Even if you're morphing something. So he's fun. He's fun in the game. You know, he's a cute little Scottish cat robot. He's definitely not a middle-aged uh, corporate executive. To be fair, they don't really make that. They don't make that not clear, if that makes sense. It's like as soon as Kate Sif is introduced, he's like, I'm going to help you. They then like smash cut to Reeve doing something on his computer, smiling. You know, he's still better than Morgana, though. Oh, Kate Sif is a hundred times better than Morgana. It's not hard, but still. Yeah, Even when Kate Sif... <laughs> See, when Kate Sif fucks, like, fucks you over, he's doing it intentionally. He's, True. he's, not, just throw, he's not just throwing a tantrum. Yeah, he's like, well, I am a Shinra spy, and they all know he's a Shinra spy. They call him out on being a Shinra spy. And he's like, and? And then it's like, you know, and then he re and then he's like, well, yeah, I'm a Shinra spy, but it doesn't mean I don't like you guys. I thought we were friends. And then it turns out he was right. 
I think my hottest uh, Final Fantasy take is probably just the fact that I think Tifa is kind of just boring as a character. That's a confession I have to make. I kind of find Tifa boring. Um, you really do have no taste. <laughs> she has like no personality. She's just boring. Just she's just girl. I mean, disagree, but I also don't really have the energy to fight to fight you on this. So it's me. Girl, what's I mean, unique about you? Well, uh, I can punch. I mean, a lot of characters don't have much personality in the original game, to be fair, so, yeah. Unless she suddenly grew I mean, one in this one. She does, I mean, she's got personality in Remake. Yeah, they talk I haven't played a Remake, more. in all fairness. I'm, I was going to say, in Remake, the characters talk a lot more in short. I'm waiting, for remake to fi I'm waiting for Remake to finish before I buy it. I was, I was just, I was just, I was just waiting till part. I was just waiting till part two, which is out, so, you know. No, I just don't. No, I just need the means to play it. Well, you can wait a year or you can get a PS5, so good luck. I'm fine to wait a year. I got plenty of backlog. I mean, if I wait, I mean, if I wait a year, it'll probably be out on PC. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm going to be PC. waiting because I don't have a PS5. That's, or what, that's what I'm saying. It'll come to PC in about a year. Yeah, yeah. probably. Because 16 on the verge of coming out for I don't PC. Know I, want, I don't know if I want to wait that long, though. I mean, I just never want to play 16 because nothing about it looks interesting. Yeah, it's... that's the same with me. It doesn't look interesting to I me. I mean, either. I'll say this about 16. The uh, summon fights are great. I wish more of the game was the summon fights. You know what? Uh, I've seen the summon fights. You know what ha What those basically feel like? The fights that I, I have in uh, Grand Blue Relink, they feel like that. Fair. And they have a whole but... mode of just fighting those. Once I found out the main character pretty much only uses swords, I'm like, alright, yeah, that's the end of that. At least freaking Jack Garland can use a lot of different weapons. I mean, he already, is, he already has a sword, but... Less sauce than Jack? That's pretty bad. But the trade-off is that Clive gets some um, extra abilities from the various icons he absorbs. So he has, like, uh, a da he's got, like, a, ma a super dash off of uh, Phoenix, and he gets a guard counter off of Titan. And I think, oh, and, tight, and um, he gets like a claw, like claws off of, like, so he does only have a sword weapon, but he has other abilities that do damage from, so. Oh, and also he gets a second sword when you beat Odin. Is it just a cosmetic upgrade or does it have stats? For our oh, it's a complete, oh, it's a complete, it's a completely different moveset. Um, so basically, it's like a mode you activate and you fight using Odin's sword, which has like various abilities and you know, Zantetsu Ken. So, I don't know, 16 was fun, but it's also a game of not in any rush to replay. I think I'd actually probably do New Game Plus on that though before I do New Game Plus on Spider Man 2, which is Ooh. out. But like, I, I, I don't know, I'm still kind of pissed at the fact that what I think is a basic feature, which would be the time of day and the new game plus, especially since they were in the first game on launch. Yeah, no, I agree. The fact the that we then had to wait like five fucking months or whatever it is. Yeah, the game came out, what, October? So yeah, five, yeah, about five months. Oh God, Four or five months. My, it's actually one of my favorite parts of this game. It's the uh, the level where you have the uh, the giant maze for the uh, the RC car. That's like a little town that it drives through. Uh, oh, that's, yeah, that's neat. It, oh, it's like, like one of my favorite parts in this game. Yeah, the fact that that was sort of a, a feature we had to wait five months for, and then it also launches alongside fucking paid DLC for that's just that's like five pa that's like five pounds or dollars or whatever. For just two suits that look fucking hideous. Oh, I saw those suits. They're bad. Why does Insomniac keep partnering with people who can't design a spider suit worth of shit? That's a good question. I, I don't even know a joke. That's just a good question. It'd be one thing if they're like, yeah, so we partner with these people and we've got... Like, fucking, uh, at least Overwatch partners, partners with, like, Cowboy Bebop. I mean, the costumes look like shit. But it's at least something. I mean, the only one I, I don't know, I like him. The only one I'm not too, I'm not sure on is uh, Doomfister's jet because that does kind, because it does kind of just look like Doomfist is in whiteface, and that's a bit. Oh, I didn't even see that one. Jesus. Yeah, Doomfist is jet, but he's still, but he's like, 
his skin is pa is like paler to match Jet's complexion, so it's this. I don't know. It's I think saying. it would have been better not to do that. I think probably would have been better to just say, yeah, yeah, he's he's black, and because it's like the show, it's like the Netflix show. Like yeah, the Netflix show it. sucked and all, but it's better than doing that. Yeah, than making him white, because oh, I know it's a dangerous precedent. <laughs> If you start having characters uh, in, uh, I don't want to get too much into that, but I saw that and I saw the way it looked and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if that's so, I'm not sure that's okay. Yeah, I, but, I, hmm. But then I'm sure someone will argue that just the, you know, the Kree or whatever his name is, since the person he was named after was a massive scumbag. Uh, I think it's Cassidy. Anyway. Cowboy, since Cowboy Man, uh, since some, I'm sure someone would point to that interview and be like, "Oh yeah, Spike's Asian, so Cowboy Man is dressed up and, like is dressed in yellow face." And I'm like, I'm not entirely sure Spike was meant to be Asian. That feels like something people just made up to justify the casting of that guy, who looked like he was like 60. Yeah. Considering his name is but Spike Spiegel. I mean, yeah, but also, you know, Japan, like, it's anime, they'll, like, just have, he's this guy who's as Japanese as they come, but his name is Elbow Smash. True. Like, you can't necessarily just say, well, it's a name that sounds like it belongs to someone, who, like, a non-Asian. True. But, Unless, yeah, they, unless they outright say. Yeah. But then also, at the same time, like, contemporary anime at the time, you have things where they were clearly going for, like, a much more worldwide cast so things like um big o yeah yeah being, yeah being set in not america or being set, not, america. being set in not new york with the main guy named roger smith i'm pretty sure yeah. that's a pretty american name he's pretty american but also you know he could he also could have been set in gotham because he is basically anime bruce wayne it's true he's rich he's rich he dresses in black he has a butler oh no fuck i fell let's try that again He's basically Batman. Because if he Batman had a giant robot instead of was Batman, I mean, it was made by the same people that did episodes of the animated series. Makes sense, really. And it's the yeah, instant was straight, straight, straight up plagiarized from fucking uh, Queen. Yeah, a little, little known band that nobody would have ever heard of. Shit. I mean, they played they plagiarized a lot of songs. They also plagiarized the Godzilla. Thing. Oh yeah, but Bob Buda, Bob Buda. Wait, wait, no, hold on, that's not right. Plenty of people have stolen that one. The difference is, is that most people is that pe most places in Japan don't care about plagiarism in that sense. Yeah. It's only when you plagiarize them in the West that they're like, no, but actually you can't just do that. I mean, it, it probably it might have flew under the radar if Big O wasn't heavily marketed in the U.S. Yeah. But unfortunately, it was on Toonami. Whoops. It was far more popular there than it ever was in Japan. It's just the same with Voltron, isn't it? Over in Japan, it's like, oh, well, we've got like a thousand of, the, of these robot shows, whereas in the West, it's like, oh, neat. A cool robot show, we've not seen one of those in like 50 years. Or at once at the time. I mean, technically, but you know, Big O also was designed to be very American. It's not, I'm like Gold Line, which is just like, you know, your average. Yeah, wasn't a Big O originally made for the Western audience side of things? I mean, Probably made with it in mind. I don't know if it was made ever going to be made. I, mean, I know. Was... I think season two was. Yeah, season two was directly funded by Cartoon Network. Okay. Uh, season one was just no. They just they just they were just trying to ape the aesthetic from Batman the animated series because the studio worked on some episodes from it. That's fair. Dorothy specifically looks like she could come straight out of that fucking series. Just the way she looks. I mean, so does Roger, to be honest. 
Oh, I think the butler is probably the closest to you. Yeah, this guy's oh, yeah, actually yeah, yeah. Be... I forget the butler's name. Norman. That was it. Norman Reedus. No. He definitely does not have an amazing fetus. You mean a funky fetus? Mm. Uh, yeah. Ugh. Other than that, uh, I mean, I'm kind of just waiting now for when like Hi-Fi Rush comes out, because that's the next thing I want to play. Oh yeah, I'll definitely, I definitely want to hear your thoughts on that. Cause I played that last year and I loved it. No, Nor Norman's um, last name is Bird. Yeah, that makes sense. I think he was actually voiced by. Um, he's, he was he's voiced by like the guy who does Alfred in the like stand-ins. So not um, not the original guy from the animated series. Hmm. Because you know they did uh, they had the usual non-union anime VAs at the time. You know, like good old David Lucas. I wonder what ever happened to David Lucas. Sure, he's around. Keeps popping up in things, but I mean, I hear, I hear, I occasionally hear of someone who sounds like I think that's Dave Lucas, and then I check the credits. It's like Steve Blum. What? Who's Steve Blum? Yeah. Who could no that clue, be? but you know, he's keeping old Dave Lucas from getting work. Ugh! I dare. Sorry, I think they're friends because you know he's called him a few times. This is a joke. No, no, he told he totally called somebody. No, Sabo, we're totally... joking. We're fucking around. No, he knows. Steve, Steve Blum totally called Dave Lucas, he knows. And, it and it didn't sound like uh, you know a pre-recorded message on the other side. I, I mean, I I mean to be fair, I've seen Batman call. I've seen Batman be on the telephone with Bruce Wayne. So no, I know it's a joke. Just Blum Blum has gone to such to such lengths to keep up the charade that, like, he's actually made phone calls to himself. I respect the hustle. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I, I respect commitment to a bit. It's like, it's like how the, the Japanese voice of Amaro is totally not the same guy who, who plays ribbons. Definitely not. No, in fact, but if you'd like to see him, he can go get him, hold on, and then he'll come, leave and he'll come back, like, wearing a hat and sunglasses. You know, I hear some lunatics say that the ocean dub Goku is the same as Raw from Ned and Eddie, but I, I don't believe them. I mean, nobody remember. Oh, I mean, people do remember the ocean dub, but you know. Didn't Sean Chevel flip out on that one guy one time? I wouldn't be surprised. I don't he's know. Like, I, he's like, I'm Goku, not you. Me! Me! Like I said, I don't know, but I wouldn't really be surprised. I wouldn't put it past him. Because unless you're Masako, he doesn't seem to respect you as a Goku voice actor. Damn. Or that... like the original, but only because... Yeah, Masako! Her oh, yeah. name is oh, Masako! I thought you meant Masako X. No! I was like... Damn, I didn't... I was like, I don't think he respects Masako No, X. no, he does not respect Masako X. I'm talking about actual um, Masako, not screen name Masako. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure he, the only reason he does it is because he get, you know, murdered. He knows! Him. He knows better! Now imagine being disrespected by Crowler from Yu-Gi-Oh GX. You slapper scum! Ah, uh, you know Crowler has said a slur. I mean, he's definitely said something. He said. I won't. I won't repeat him, but I bet you he said a couple. I think there's a reason why when the uh, principal of the school left, they didn't make him the principal. <laughs> he had to be deputy principal with the li with the Frenchman, with the short Frenchman who's called Napoleon. Imagine losing out to fucking Napoleon Bonaparte. I'll be back. You know. I should be the principal. Me. Yeah, GX. GX was weird like that. I mean, All I hate yeah. is that those filthy earth noids. 
I mean, GX had the set, had the problem that it repeated for like every season, which is all four seasons, which is basically here's a bunch of shit that doesn't matter, and then like the last five episodes of the season, here's the actual plot. Like without fail, every season. Oh no, this evil society! This evil society is taking over our school. What was their plan? It's just to send this. It's just to send a bunch of random people of the week to go and fight Jaden. Until eventually they decide to, you know, actually engage in their plot. Hey, but there was an uh, episode where Jaden was bad, or a season or something, I don't quite remember. Oh, like half a season where he was bad, and then he still, uh, uh, didn't lose. Yeah, and then he was like, oh, I'm so, he, he, he's like, oh man, I'm so edgy. I well, brought shame to everything. And then, he, and then after that, he spends every, that's the, like, last of the season... Well, the la entire last season just being depressed and hating everything, and then he goes back in time to fight Yugi, and uh, they never show what happens. Ends. I assume Yugi just wins. I assume Yugi just wins because you know. I was gonna say I hope Yugi won. Because... Well, no, Yugi actually lost uh, matches in the series. Uh, Jaden doesn't, so Jaden won. Yeah, but the difference is, is that who, which of them has the bigger bullshit powers? It's like obviously. Beat Yugi. You say, no, 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 the third one. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got the king of it. But we're not talking Motorcycle about Motorcycle guy. Didn't Jaden lose once and like as a result he couldn't see cards for a while? Yes, because Sartorius, who's the, who's the guy who's voiced by Dio, uh, basically uh, got the what? Got the guy who uses Destiny heroes, which are like elemental heroes, but, ba but bad, uh, and tricked him into basically having like a magical time bomb thing that if he beat Jaden would cripple Jaden's spirit. And so he couldn't, literally couldn't see cards anymore. And then he went to space and met a dolphin. And the deep. dolphin, was... and the dolphin was like, "Look at my, look at my ass." And also, you have, also, you can see cards again. Amazing. I'm touched. And also, maybe he designed the cards. I forget. That's stupid enough. To, that's stupid enough to be in GX. I haven't watched GX in like. I just, I just remember the guy, the guy who like fell into a, a fossil pit and like. <laughs> got a dinosaur. Castleberry. Lodged into yes. his leg and that gave him dino DNA. <laughs> yes. And it would manifest where he would get dinosaur eyes when he got angry, and then except at the end, and when he became a cartoon dinosaur. So that he could launch into space to fight sat to fight a killer satellite. And I didn't make up anything I just said. The only thing I remember about the show was that a lot of people on the internet were horny for the blonde girl. Yeah. And she ended up not really mattering in the end. She, she didn't even have a minor celebrity VA like the girl from uh, the motorcycle show. Uh, Mike's my wife got wrote out, written out then. Maybe. No, that was Decca Yellow. Who was like huh. trying to follow Pink's footsteps of getting into, getting into becoming a VA. But it didn't really work. That was like her only major role. And then she was just like, alright, I guess I'm just going to be a mom now. I've heard that moms are tough, so. God damn it. I mean, they made their own little mini series of Sentai characters that are moms that lasted like two episodes. I remember hearing about that. I never seen anything of it. I just remember hearing about it. It's just like a web series thing. It's nothing. It's basically just them chatting in a cafe and like having a, a kind of sort of fight scene where they don't have their helmets on. Nothing too exciting. Oh. And then Magiello shows up because Magiello shows up in everything. The 
guy literally like just like basically camps out of to camps out on toys a lot. Like, hey, you guys got any cameo roles for me today? I'll be the one, dude. How's Boom Boom Chick going, by the way? Uh, it's like Go Under, except it tries to be serious until it's time for the fights, and then it just goes in utter insanity of like the the loud robot man voiced by Ash Ketchum, who like turns into a giant robot and then they have fights where they do silly things and like follow traffic laws while fighting like if the light turns red he has to stop because of course they have to obey the traffic laws of course oh yeah don't be stupid if common rider chaser has to obey them because he had an axe that he had a weapon that was designed after a pedestrian crossing so if the if the if it showed the red man, he had to stand still and wait. Yeah. But then when it was green, he could you know kill people. Well, to do his finisher, it had to turn red for like a few seconds, and he had to wait, and then he could go and hit them with the axe. That's so dumb. I kind of love it. Drive's great. You'd say I keep talking about how much we like drive, but we want the ride to come back. And this is and this is and this is just because the person who drew, who designed it was a weirdo. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Everything in Drive is like, or just because the person, this main scientist lady, is kind of nuts. He's, he's like, why did, why do they build a red light into the axe? I just thought it'd be cool. And he's like, you know, you don't have to. He's like, you don't have to stand there and wait for the red light. He's like, ah, I don't know. It'd feel wrong not to. Hey, look, he, hey, look. He has to obey the traffic laws because he got he got his driving license. We saw it happen. Yes. It was great. Chase is the best. I miss Chase. I mean, I miss Drive. Yeah. Everyone. Don't miss Gold Drive though. Which is too bad because he's the only one that actually showed up recently. Yeah. I mean, he shows up. He showed up in Outsiders just to get his ass kicked. By Hirobi, so I guess it was worth it. I mean, Gold Drive is fun, but it's like he's very much that I want to see everyone else though. <laughs> You're in the way of heart. And also the scientist lady and um that that one officer guy showed up in like one of the revise specials. Oh uh, yeah. I'm not really sure why. Because I think it was a mystery special. No, and... this was no this was this was after the mystery special. Oh, well, I don't know. No, they're no, they're just there. Like re one of one of the revised characters is a power up, and it's just like they just show up and give it to him. Like, why are you guys here? Why are you in this show? Fiftieth anniversary, and he didn't have any other cameos, or yeah, unless you count all the armors being based off of past riders. But I feel like we'd seen that before. I mean, the mystery basically just said Axel, and like the two guys from Gaim, but they were only there in the beginning. I like that one special where Drive and Axel meet, and they're like, basically, there's a case, there's a murder case or something, and they're like, well, the body's in my jurisdiction. No, it's in my jurisdiction, because it's like right on the line between their different precincts. So they're just standing around arguing about who's going to solve the case. Yeah. Me, no me, no me! <laughs> Which is even worse, because you can't actually, uh, you can't actually really talk to Axel in any way, shape, or form without him getting angry at you. Yeah, his whole gimmick is he's just uh, he's irrationally angry, and also he's a motorcycle. Like his 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 catchphrase is "Don't ask me questions." Don't ask questions you're not prepared to handle the answers to. No, he just like don't ask me questions. Like if you say anything to him, he's like, like okay. Never put me in a situation. Yeah, he's kind of a jerk, but also he turns into a bike. He turns he turns into a bike, and he kind of sort of eventually learns to like. The other characters, but only them. I mean, does he learn to like uh, Double, or does he just learn to like uh, the the one who will be his wife? No, he kind of sort of likes Double after a while, even though Shotaro annoys him. Poor Shotaro. I mean, Shotaro annoys everybody, so you know. But he's the best. I mean, he annoyed. I'm, I'm gonna say he annoyed Baron, but then again, a lot of people annoy Baron. Who didn't annoy Baron? I mean, they they made a good team against Black and Black RX, so I guess you know. But I mean, seriously, who who didn't annoy Baron at some point? Yeah. 
Unless you're gonna try and tell me that, um... Unless you're gonna try and tell me that he wasn't annoyed by... Knuckle? Knuckles? I mean, he, I mean, I was like, he was annoyed by X8, but he eventually learned to like him. Knuckles. Unlike Sonic, he don't chuckle. He rather flex no, this, Knuckles. No, no, this Knuckle does does chuckle. Yes. Sadly. No, he's not Knuckles, he's Knuckle. 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 Just the one. Because... He's only got one knuckle. No, just, but that's just his suit. Is just He just has big hands, and that's it. He, yeah. doesn't, have, he doesn't have any other weapons. He's just get, he doesn't really do anything. Damn. He doesn't have a giant hammer made of mangoes. No. Even even when he, get, he gets a power-up, like, he's still... And then he just has big hands. Also, Bigger I, hands. Also, I have the genie form now. Uh, quick, play your favorite. Quick, uh, let's play uh, your favorite uh, genie song right here and get copyright strike by Disney. No. Damn. I mean, there's only two of them. Three if you count Prince of Thieves. Pretty sure he's got one in the fat one. Oh yeah, he has he has one in, he has one in each sequel, but you know nobody cares about the sequels. Hey, I, like the third, I, like, I like the third one. Second one's all right. Second one's all right if you just accept that. Oh yeah, it's just a it's just a double feature episode of like the TV show. I mean, they both I mean, kind I, of are. I mean, I like the third. Uh, one. No, the second the second one is like definitely like meant to be a um like a opening like episode an opening movie for like the show whereas like the third one has budget has a, a you know a bit more budget behind it so one is definitely a tv movie and the other one is uh well also a tv a, a director video movie that they were like hey why don't we actually try with one of these yeah why don't we actually get robin williams back well, to be fair, they, they had to uh, do a lot of uh, apologizing to get him to come back. Well, the guy, the guy that pissed him off um, left the company, so that might be why. Well, that was one of the things, yeah. Let's go! Uh, I'm going to do so one more level, which will probably also be Pink Monkey, because I just unlocked the genie form. So I'll do, just do that, Pink Monkey, and then we'll end for the day. Yeah, because 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 Robin said uh, you know hey don't don't use me to market the movie too much I don't want it. Like there was a certain exact percentage and they went I... to the letter on it, but like in a way that was very like clear what they were doing. I don't know. And then the, and then the one guy didn't. The one, one guy was like, the one guy was like I thought Robin was just saying that to you know be nice to the people around here because he has to be he has to be an arrogant shitbag because all movie stars are arrogant shitbags and that ex didn't exactly endear him to him. He's not wrong. This, uh, I mean, in this case, uh, he was uh, wrong in that case. He was wrong in this case, case because Robin, Robin absolutely did not want did not want it to be a star vehicle for him. It was just a, a cute the, thing he was doing. The only reason he did, uh, like, was it though he did Fern Gully before that, which he only did because he agreed with the message of the movie. Oh yeah, he did Fern Gully, and then that one guy showed up at Fern Gully and demanded that they take him off the movie, and they were like, "We, have, we don't answer to you. We're not Disney." And Robin's like, "I don't answer to you. I'm just an actor." that can, get, gets contracted to do films. I, I'm not a Disney employee. And the guy was like, but it's going to cut into our profits. You have to stop. Why would it cut into our profits? Uh, because it was another an animated movie start, that featured Robin Williams as a side character who, that came out around the same time. Oh, no. What if people saw two movies? Yeah. Impossible. I mean, Aladdin was a major hit and Fern Gully wasn't, so his fears were unfounded. But yeah, you know, it's just the fact that he had the sheer gall to show up at this other studio's... Uh, movie and demand they take this one guy off the project like he had any authority over them. I mean, let's be honest, Disney had literally no idea which of their movies were going to work or not work back then. I mean, they still don't now, but... Because they were uh, convinced that Pocahontas would be a smash hit and Lion King would... Uh, maybe not fail, not flop, but would be a whatever movie. I mean, this was uh, after Mermaid and Beauty of the Beast, so I think they had a pretty good idea of that. Would do good. Lion King was the one where they were like, it's only about animals, I don't know if people are going to like it. It's more the fact they were convinced Pocahontas was going to be the next thing. Yeah. It was going to be like a historical thing. And then somewhat luckily for them, it wasn't. 
because I think if Pie Contest was a lot more beloved than it is, it would have opened itself up to a lot more criticism. Oh yeah. yeah. For being, you know, horrendously, uh, <laughs> horrendously bad about history. Oh yeah, like it certainly, it certainly had a very optimistic view of, of what happened back then. Everything was wrong. There wasn't a single thing right in that movie. But it's okay because they ended up by contest to so get with someone who she historically didn't get with. When they, they made they made a sequel actually where she does meet that guy. Yeah. And she does fall with him, and it's completely weird and random. And it's like uh, you guys complain about the historical inaccuracy, so fine. Here's the guy. It's okay. Neither movie are good. No. So yeah, like I said, they kind of almost dodged a bullet by that being bad. But then you know, Disney being Disney, when Mulan was like, "Hey, people like Mulan, but it's not good. It's not that big in China because well, it's inaccurate to China." They were like, "Well, what's funny is it's more accurate than the one they made later." Well, the one they made later just made her be amazing and awesome because they thought China would like be like, "Hey, one of our girls is shown to be cool and awesome." Well, they didn't even do that. Apparently, like she doesn't really do much in the movie. I don't know. That's that's just a story I heard. I, did, I didn't watch it, and I heard China was like. We don't need you using our stuff to make movies for us. We make our own movies. If we want to see a Hollywood movie, we want it to be a Hollywood movie. You're not, go you're not going to court us by making movies about our stuff. We can do that. I mean, I think more the fact that they had to thank a concentration camp. It was probably the most fucked thing. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that was later. No, no, no. It was during the filming of Mulan. Oh, was it? Like, yeah. The uh, live action one, yeah. Because they filmed right next to the. Uh, they filmed in, in the same uh, prefecture. If you listen closely, you can hear the screams. That the concentration camp is set in. And uh, part of the thing is. Part of the thing they were told is here are the organizations you have to thank. And one of the said organizations is the PR firm that manages the camp. So, you know, that's a good look. A special probably, thanks to Auschwitz. That's probably fine. Is it though? I mean, I'm sure that's what Disney thought. Of special night. thanks to Auschwitz. I can't believe we were already back to fucking uh, Power Ranger Red. It's fine. Look, it's a conversation on the internet. At some point, the Nazis are going to get involved. You're not wrong. I remember there used to be a rule where, like, if you bring up Nazis, you immediately lose. Man it, must, man, it must have made those fucking, like, World War II, like, discussion boards really, really boring. Yeah. I think it was, like, it wasn't even, it wasn't so much you lose, it was, um, is like, a time for the longer a conversation goes, uh, the high, the increased likelihood of uh, Hitler being brought up in the conversation, I think what it was. Yeah. I don't remember what the what the rule was called, but I do remember I just, I, it. I just I just remember if like you went right for comparing somebody to Hitler, like your argument was immediately invalid because you went right for the low hanging fruit. Oh yeah, obviously we're not talking. Obviously, I think it was was it Godwin's law. I think it was Something Godwin. Like that. Yeah, it is. I think I'm checking it now. I'm curious. Uh. Oh yeah, it's Godwin's Law, which basically goes, I disagree with you, which basically means you're Hitler. You disagree with me? How could you? Only Nazis would disagree with me. There's the monkey. Come here, you! Monkey. I mean, that's the, that's the whole nature of this game. Catch the monkeys. Monkey C net. Oh yeah, and uh, I will say this, Rebirth. I will say this, uh, Rebirth's uh, card game is probably better than Triple Triad. I didn't really don't know how. Triad, so. Don't know how much of a bar that is. I was gonna say that's Triple Triad. I'm not sure if that's a high bar or not. Some people really love triple triad. Some people also like stubbing their toe. I mean, I don't like triple triad, but it is relatively easy to win once you figure out the tricks to it. Or at least get enough good cards, unless you get the dreaded random rule. Which just basically makes it impossible to win, because you always, 
you always get a terrible draw. But if you can actually pick your cards, then yeah, it's just like just throwing a bunch of high level character or GF cards and you win. Yeah, this one has actual strategy. Yeah. And an entire subplot that is <laughs> weirdly you yards influenced. Because it's like you just start playing this game and it's like, oh, here are X amount of players in this town. And then as you increase your rank, you start getting visions about the creator of the game. Who was like, actually, there's this evil Shadow Queen who is imprisoned in the cards and you need a strong enough duelist to defeat her. Jesus Christ. Like, that sounds familiar. And I'm like, wait a second. You know what, that's so stupid, I kind of enjoy that, though. Oh, it's great. And, uh... It also allows us to get our... It actually gets us our scene of Red 13 in his disguise. It is in. Good! I'm glad. And it's even better than you think, because he has to... He decides that the only way he can sell the illusion is to act as flamboyantly as, pop, as possible. Which means he's fucking... Dancing like he's Michael Jackson. Oh my fucking god, that's amazing! That is that is the best thing I've heard today. I love that. So, I will say this: Rebirth does not do, does not uh, shy away from the silly. I didn't think it would, it did, considering I saw some of the stuff I saw in our remake. To be fair, ah, uh, this one, yeah. But so Red I mean. Barry gets to keep his gay little summer outfit, which I'm I happy for. I, I remember seeing that because, like, they were showing the uh, the beach thing in one of the trailers, and everyone was gooning over the characters, and I was like, I don't care. So, then I saw him in his little sailor outfit, and I started going, Yeah! That's the shit I want to see! It's the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. But he's happy. He ro he knows he's, he knows he looks good at it. He does? Oh, and, uh... The play, their play is in, and it gets expanded. Good. So now it's not just Cloud and his date who are in. It's everyone. Well, it's Barrett. It's Barrett and Red at least. Oh. As well, Barrett's playing the bad guy. <laughs> so it's just funny having Barrett talking in ye old English. Oh, also, sadly though, the play is loveless. I thought the play was the dragon thing, or is the dragon thing loveless? The dragon thing has now been changed to loveless. Oh. So, there is no dragon. There is just the dragon king and his uh, fateful dog companion. But, you know. And also, the dates have been expanded, so it's not just the part. So you can t so you can go on a date with Vincent, Sid, and Kate. Yes. It's just kind of awkwardly bros hanging out because Sid doesn't like or Vince doesn't like anyone, and you no, know, Sid Sid's there, and well, Kate's a weird little a weird little Scottish cat man. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. That's really funny. I was say it must. Be must be kind of awkward when it isn't the, when that's the scene where Kate betrays you if he's right there. Um, uh, it's the next day. Oh, they changed that, so it's not during the date. Uh, no, it's oh, so what happens is you have to is Don Corneo is actually makes a comeback in Reba because he's challenged in for fucking full WWE uh, style. He's challenging Dio to a competition for ownership of the Golden Saucer. Of course he is. And because Dio has injured himself, he needs champions to fight in his stead. Oh. So in all, he'll give you the keystone, but only if you can defeat Don Corneo's champions. So it's not just, hey, do one round of the arena and you can have it. No, you have to fight Don Corneo's champions and then also the Don himself, by which I mean he's literally riding atop that fucking Absol. It's back. And then before you can ga grab the keystone, uh, Kate fucks off with it. Well, actually, what happens is the Turks all show is all the Turks show up, but then also Rufus is like, I want a rematch against Cloud. So Rufus and Cloud have their uh, fight again. So I'm gonna say so. So so like a, a lot of characters show up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, Song is actually a boss in this game. 
not just some arsehole who just keeps showing up and then gets rando stabbed. I guess rando stabbed and never shows up again, so everyone thought he died. Until he showed up in Advent Children, he was like, wait, how is that guy still alive? Wait, are you dead? And not, and not with dramatic reveal. Like Rufus right. either. It's just like, at, least, at least with Rufus, they're like, oh wait, yes, this is how I survived the science. He's like, no, I'm still here. I mean, in the original, he's not in the original cut of the movie. I don't think he actually is ever on screen. But I think you hear him and Elena talking over radio, and then they get like beaten up no, by no, the gremlins. No, they, they don't. They fire the net for Rufus. Do they? I don't. Off, when he jumps, no, when he jumps off the building, and they 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 throw up the net so he can. Dramatically jump off the building and shoot the head with a shotgun a few times. I will say they are trying to uh, not quite diminish Rufus from being a bad guy, but there is a lot of maybe Rufus isn't a total scumbag like the rest of. Shinra. I mean, they probably have no choice because the Advent Children already established that he isn't. Yeah, Advent Children established that Rufus can totally be a bro. This is the funny thing is of all like the Shinra characters in Return for Advent Children, Rufus is probably the most innocent just because he had actually nothing to do with the uh, pl dropping of the plate. Oh yeah, he's like, I wasn't even in town at that time. I was on a helicopter. Whereas, whereas you know, Reno is joking about it, like, hey, yeah, even though I'm the one that totally dropped the plate and killed all your friends. <laughs> you press the button, you dickhole. I'm going off to train now. I'll come back for you. I'll come uh. back and yeah, Barrett and Di ba like Dyed and Barrett is completely unchanged, more or less. Which I didn't think they'd change anything with Dyne. Well, Pink's done. She'll be back to uh, free all the free the freaky monkey five. Cause well, because that's this game where she does that shit, and you gotta fight them yeah. all again. Yeah. At least it's not every monkey. I do know it's not every monkey that's unsealed. That would fucking suck. Also, brand new character Chadley, who is in Remake, is even more prominent in Rebirth. I hope you like Chadley. Is that that little blonde kid? Yes. That's Chadley. Why is he... Okay, sure. Whatever. Uh, because he... He... Because bas basically they set him up as the guy who gives you summon materia. So now he just does all. Now he's like your technical support. Because he also doesn't like shit. Well, I think it's less he doesn't like shit. I think it's just what uh, everyone hate. Everyone who has any sense hates Hojo. Because Hojo's Hojo's the worst. You know what? I like Yumi's better. Pity she managed to get away. I mean, every, I mean, every every Final Fantasy VII side game or thing is just even more of. Oh yeah, here's another fucked up thing Hojo did that ruined everyone everyone's day. I mean, that's kind of true. I mean, he is basically introduced being like, you know, and then the Hojo Nation attacked. He he's introduced like, you know, that girl we kidnapped. We should probably we should probably mate her with the, you know that dog thing we have, just to create a better specimen for me to experiment on that won't die as easily. In I mean, Remake, he, he doesn't specify Red 13, she should make with Red 13, but he does specify that all of the sol all of the G-type soldiers who are the ones using Angeal cells should totally run a train on her to provide more airs. Yeah. So, fucking Hojo's the worst. Sounds like something he'd say. Even Aerith in Rebirth is like, I fucking hate Hojo. You know me, Cloud. I love. I want peace and love for everyone, but not for Hojo. Hojo can die. <laughs> Never for Hojo. Even Johnny would hate Hojo if Johnny knew who Hojo was, and or if either of you knew who Johnny was. You just say the name Hojo, and he's like, "Why do I suddenly feel intense hatred in my heart?" Oh, he's that Johnny's one guy. He's the one guy in Casa del Sol. Uh, yeah, he's like, but he he's like their is. Old friend. Yeah, but he's, uh, he's, I mean, he's also in Remake, because they brought him in as the guy from Sector 7, who crushed on Tifa, obviously, because he's yeah. got some sense, and also he's voiced by Yuri Lionfall, but he just doesn't understand that Cloud hates his fucking guts. So he'll walk around, because you meet him, you meet him in Sector 7, he's in Wall Market, and you'll walk around town. And he'll be like, hey, bro, how's it going, bro? What's up, bro? And Cloud's like, fucking shut up, I hate you. And he's like, 
<laughs> good, good one, bro. All right. But you know, also he fails at everything he does. So that's always fun. All right. Uh, monkey's uh, monkey. Pink monkey was not caught, but beaten. I still got the mm. This is a good. Uh, this is a good place well, to end for tonight. Joker. So, uh, how many more Ape Escape games are there to go? This is the last Ape Escape game. Well, then what are we gonna do? Another Who knows? Game. Whatever the fuck I feel like. Yuck. Yuck. Time to leave. It's time to leave.